Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. We have um, a great topic that was suggested by previous attendees of our webinars. Um, and we have some excellent speakers um, from different countries uh, and with different experience. Um, so hopefully it will be a useful webinar review. I got a lot of emails with very interesting questions. Um, so let's go into it. So this week's top, this month's webinar topic is open research in Asia Pacific countries. Um, the format is a Q and A. Um, so if there's any questions that you want to answer and you can um, see on the presentation, just uh, feel free to add them to the chat box, um, and I will ask the I will ask the panelists. So first, I'd like to introduce our panelists. Um, so, well, I'll get them to introduce themselves. Um, Rishi, do you want to start with yeah. uh, your introduction? Yeah, yeah. I'm Rishi. I'm pursuing my PhD from Bits Pilani, which is one of the most prestigious college in India. And I am, means I am, my background is mechanical engineering. And I was also a visiting researcher at Technical University of Brunswick for six months, and I have just come two days before, and I want to discuss this uh, webinar so that all our means uh, means with our discussions something good can come out. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Fei. Hello, everyone. My name is Fei, and I'm a new catch student uh, in psycholinguistics at the University of Macau. Actually, my background is, is Chinese linguistics, so my publications were in Chinese mostly. And now I'm trying to uh, write in English and prepare some English manuscripts. And my research area is uh, Chinese language processing and learning using some brain imaging technologies like EEG or FNIRS. It's very great to meet you here and hope we can have a very good discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Julio? Hi, all. I am Julio. I am a PhD student at the Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. I'm part of the Social and Effective Neuroscience Lab, where I'm mostly working on the application of machine learning and neural networks to the analysis of neurophysiological signals. Thank you very much. Cool. Um, so, I want to use the things for uh, this webinar. So I've split the questions roughly into four um, overarching themes. So that's um, open access. Um, it's kind of a general discussion about um, whether it's prioritized and what's the attitude in um, our panelists' institutions or countries. Um, then government, government focus on R&D and how that affects academic productivity. Um, and then we have a few questions around where to publish and um, where where they get their information, um, kind of keep up with their, their research. Um, in within these two themes, there's also questions around uh, publishing and reading in local language versus um, publishing and reading in English. Um, if there's any other questions that you think would not fit into these themes, just pop them in the chat box. Um, so let's let's get, get into it. So first, um, just a di discussion about open access in general. Um, it, open access is beneficial to scientific research, um, scientific communication, and the development of a society. What, what are your thoughts? Um, just a quick discussion first before we start. So should we start with Julio? Yes. Okay. So. From our lab, we are trying to push everything into an open access, not only the papers, but also the data. Uh, For us, it's not just about gaining visibility, but it's also about demonstrating that our research work is good. By making the research available to all the people around, we are hopefully demonstrating that our work is supported by the data. And we also believe that by publishing open access, we are giving the possibility to all the people to build their research upon ours. So, I guess it's really helpful, not only for us, but also for all the people that are working within our field and in all the fields. Great, thank you. Rishi? 
Yeah, ma'am. I will speak about India. Means in India, means we have different different type of institutions. Some institutions are funded by government. Some are private institutions, and some are which are not funded. So, which are not funded, they have very difficult to assess journals if it is not open access. We find a lot of problems there, and means and uh, this open access provides equal opportunities for all persons of all backgrounds. To, and to set standards of their research, and they can means improve their research by this open access method. Yeah, great answer, Faye. Mm -hmm. Yes. So open science movements have been a very big event recently in our field, also in our uh, area, and we were encouraged to share our data code and with our with with other faculty members with other labs and uh, talking about uh, the open access publication as Rishi mentioned there might be some funding issue you need to negotiate with your supervisor with your PI and also the faculty level but it's a very it will be a very good opportunity to share and let others know what you're doing through open access and the open science movement thank you right um how are you so you kind of mentioned this already but how is your institution contributing to initiatives to raise awareness of open access um julio okay so in our institution we have now adopted harvard dataverse in order to publish the data and we have a repository for our papers where we can publish both cold open access and green open access paper and a few weeks ago we also started a reproducibility journal club based on Oxford reproducibility. And we are trying to convince our colleagues that it's worth publishing in open access journals and it's worth sharing the data and the manuscript. Yeah, um, Rishi? Ma'am, I haven't seen any development in our institute that they are encouraging us to publish open access journals. I know any other I mean, developments I have seen in this field. A nice, honest answer. Um, Faye? Uh, yes, and actually in our faculties, Faculty of Humanities is quite conventional and there were not a lot of such open science movement. But for myself, I have been involved in uh, one open science project with a collaborator uh, from Taiwan and other regions. And yes, there are not a lot of movements from faculty level. Yeah. Have you... Have you uh, published in open access journals, Faye? Mm, not yet. Not yet, Rishi? Mm -hmm. Yeah, ma'am, I have published in one IOP open access yeah. journal. Yeah, uh, one journal I have published in that. Great, and Julio? I published on Frontiers in Psychology, uh, Software X should be open access and scientific reports. Yeah, awesome. Um, I'm gonna ask a question about Planet further further down um, in the presentation. Um, so talking about kind of raising awareness of open access, um, in some countries it's um, influenced by the government focus on research and development. Um, we've see we've seen that in some countries in Asia, so in India and China, for example, there's a huge focus on um, on academic output um, and which which kind of um, resulted in huge growth of scientific productivity um, there's there's so much research being published in um, these countries in Asia um, do you see these trends kind of continuing um, should we start with Faye uh, sure yes it's a very uh, trendy 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 yeah. event uh, because my background is Chinese linguistics and we write in Chinese and talking about uh, Chinese language issues. But nowadays we have some pressure from faculty or university level. You have to publish your product in English in international journals. So and we so we what we talk about every day is public public or, or parish. So that's our like mingo at this time. Yeah. Um, Julio, have you seen this trend and what do you think? 
I think in Singapore it will continue to increase as the other universities are now adopting our methods, so they are pushing for open data and I guess the government will at a certain point start to ask to publish scientific products in English mostly mm -hmm. and not in minorities of the languages like Mandarin. I guess it's a trend that will be definitely continuing in the next few years. Um, yeah, and Rishi? Yes, our government also supports and means many times funds for I means publishing research papers and everything. And this trend absolutely it will continue in the next years because I means India is a developing country and we want to develop our I means this science uh, research and which means research was lagging behind, but um, uh, for the last ten years, twenty years, uh, this trend is more improving and more focus is, uh, more, more focus of our government is on a research field yeah um and what do you think of government ma mandates for open access so in europe there's plan is um in different countries there's um similar mandates where um where academics um have to publish open access if the research is government funded or publicly funded um can that change the future of publishing um what what do you think um faith i think um more or less it might be uh more or less it affect our decision making to to to, to choose the journal to publish mm -hmm. and the process and the speed of publication and for in the longer term i think we still need to see uh, how it uh, goes with the time being. Yeah. Um, Rishi? Uh, yes, uh, government should focus on this. And if open access is more uh, means permitted, then it will provide means opportunities for all. Yes. Yeah. OK. Um, and have you come across any um, predatory journals? And um, it, how how do you think the government or the industry is addressing these, um, Rishi? Um, predatory journals. What does it mean? Predatory. So kind of journals that um, that are basically not real journals, and On? in anything. So kind of journals that basically um, they're not real. They don't have the peer reviewing systems. That they, they just yeah. Uh, they're not real journals. It's not peer reviewed journals. Well, no, not only because obviously there's law free prints, but I'm not saying that these are predatory, but um, journals are basically not established and not, yeah. um, not real. Um, Julio? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. uh, okay, so we, I've came across a few, honestly. Yeah. Usually they spam you by email or something like this. Yeah. I guess that here the government is trying to prevent us to publish on these kind of journals and they are training the people in the library of the university to recognize it and they are providing us a blacklist of journals. So kind of they drive us when we face this kind of problem. So is this real or not? We usually get support not only from our institution but also by the other institution in the country. If someone has this journal in a blacklist already, we are aware of it. Yeah, um, Faye? Yes, I have heard of such uh, journals in China. It's not a small number. And so how is the government and public industry addressing them? I have read some warning, warnings or remind, reminders from the real journals. They all remind us to keep away from such journals. Yeah. Ma'am, I want to add something. Yeah. Our UGC, University Grant Commission, they have some mandate to publish uh, this type of journals in, in, only you can publish in good journals only, SCI journals. Right. They have that norms and conditions. And also for, I mean, getting our PhD degree, we shouldn't publish in all these uh, non, means not good journals, means all standard journals we have to publish. And in our mails also so many, advertisements come as a spams to publish like this, like this, with an impact factor. They show the impact factor and say that this has, this is having this impact factor, but in actuality, it is nothing, having nothing. Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, so moving to a few questions about choosing where to publish. Um, so that's kind of a, the first question is kind of really broad, um, but how do you choose where to publish, Julio? So usually we have a discussion amongst the people that are working within the same project. Usually we have like international collaboration, so it's not, just not only as in Singapore and we try mm -hmm. to see the needs of all the people all around the world. We have some partners in Europe which we work with. So usually we try to look for open access journal in order to make sure we are compliant with all the requirements from the different funding agencies, both here in Singapore and abroad. We try to avoid hybrid journal. We try to stick to gold open access journal usually, if possible. Great. Um, Rishi? Um, um, we publish in this fully gold open access journals. That means our institute is also helping in that. And our professors and all, they motivate us to publish in fully open gold open access journal, not hybrid one. Um, and Faye? Uh, in my case, I just moved to Lulab recently, and my new supervisor is very strict, and his criteria for the journal to publish is the impact factor. And he taught us we cannot publish an article in a journal whose uh, IF is below five. That's very challenging. And if we publish in open access, I think a hybrid one will be uh, preference. Yeah, and um, what do you think, Faye, what's kind of more important, the reputation, as you mentioned, impact factor, or yeah. something else about the journal more important, or um, whether it's open access or not? In our case, the reputation is more important to our PI, and that's what he cares about. Yeah. Um, Julio, um, anything that's, you mentioned that you're publishing in open access, if mm. uh, possible, is there anything that's more important to you? We usually try to check also the reputation of the journal. We are not very interested in the speed of publication at this stage. Mm -hmm. What we try to make sure is that the journal is good, that is it indexed on different search engines, not only Google Scholar, but maybe also Scopus of Web of Science. The fact of the open science is just to make consistency in what we do. So if we start with open science with one of the projects, we try to skip all the papers related to that project to open access or open science framework usually. Um, and Rishi, what's yeah. kind of more important to you? For us, uh, reputation also plays a very important role and speed also, because speed is also needed in order to get our <laughs> degrees and everything. Because if it is not in limited time, then it's a problem. So reputation is also important and we speed both. Both are important for us. And you mentioned that it's very important to your institution to publish open access. Is that, yeah, um, yeah is that the kind of um, mandated or? Um, yeah, means yeah. for PhD degree, we have to publish minimum um, four SEI journals, Scopus Index journals for getting that degree. Yes, it is mandatory. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the other question is kind of similar. It's you all mentioned that um, open access is high priority um, for pretty much all of you. Um, I mean, reputation sometimes is more important and impact is more important. Are there any challenges that you're facing when publishing open access? Um, Faye, have you come across any challenges? Mm, yes, I think funding issue is a big uh, issue for our lab. We need to negotiate with our supervisor whether they will love to pay the money to publish in open access or other journals. And yeah, that's our case. Yeah, um, Rishi, any simulation? Yeah, challenge is of funding only means some open access journals are charged are very much high. Yes. Funding matters. Yeah. yeah. And Julio? Yeah, I agree with them. Usually when deciding, funding plays an important role in this. If we need to decide between two different journals and the price is completely different. Yeah. We have usually a deep discussion before going for one or the other. Yeah. Um, and then a few more questions around where to publish. 
Um, we kind of covered government mandates, uh, but um, as I mentioned to you, a lot of journals kind of are flipping um, to open access or they're launching sister journals that are fully open access. Um, do you think that will make high impact journals more accessible or less accessible to you, Julio? I think it will make it more accessible, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Because despite the fact that we have more sister journals, I guess the quality of the journals, generally speaking, will increase, especially in the peer review process and the availability of all these manuscripts and the fact that we can read more and we're not like stick to the subscription if the journals are publishing open access, I guess it will definitely increase not only the quality of the journals, but also the work that are published in that journal. So I guess it will definitely help us. Um, Rishi, um, do you think that will make more accessible or less accessible? Yeah, it will m make more accessible because everyone will have opportunities and our all research community will get access to all these open access and they will be benefited in every respect. And Faye, w w what are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree with them. I think it will be more or less accessible for the situation. Yeah, um, you all mentioned um, reputation is hugely important for you when deciding where to publish. Would you publish in a new journal that is still to establish their rep reputation? Um, Faye, we'll start with you. I would be very careful for a new journal. And yeah, yeah. So um, we, 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 we care much about the reputation since it's new, we need to wait a while to see how it goes. Yeah, Rishi, for you? Yeah, I will also check uh, who is the editor and means if his profile is very good, then we can means uh, try to publish in that because uh, means every established one was um, new at the beginning. So means uh, checking the editors and how it is reviewed like this, like this, all these parameters, if they will fit in our parameters, then we can think of publishing. In I mean, say startup journals also. Um, and Julio? We actually just did it recently. So oh, we published yeah. on the first issue of New Open Access right. Journal. We made sure that the editor and that the, the publisher were reliable before submitting our papers, yeah. but it works out very well. To be yeah. honest. Which journal? MDPI Acoustics. Okay. It's the first issue, should be out yesterday, I guess. Oh, great. Amazing. Um, and uh, uh, some of you mentioned that um, you kind of you you were influenced where to publish by your group or by your department or by by your uh, principal investigator. Um, how much influence do they have over your decision, um, Julia? You kind of publish with the team. Yes, so usually the PI is the last word, I guess. Yeah. But in the beginning, what we try to do is we try to seek for similar journals or journals that already published something similar to what we're trying to publish or the same topic at least. Yeah. Usually we provide them with a list of possibilities and we just decide together. Yeah. Okay, Rishi, who has the final say? Yeah, I means uh, our PI, principal investigator, he has the final say. He suggests us on every matters like this yeah. and everything. And Fred, you have similar experience? Yes, I guess the influence of our PI uh, almost have all above 90% for the power decision. Yeah. Um, and uh, Fei, uh, what, what, what are the factors that influence your decision when to publish? in local journals versus international journals? In my previous uh, work, I published some uh, in some Chinese and uh, Korean journals because uh, my area is Chinese linguistics and it was thoroughly discussed, the topic was thoroughly discussed in uh, regional journals. That's why I consider public in local journals. Yeah. Come out of the field. Great. And um, so basically you're influenced by your area of research, essentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, yeah. you see, have you published in local journals? Journals based in India? Yeah, I have published in local journals and international journals both. And means we have some credit systems. If you publish in international journals, you, you will get more credits as compared to local journals. Okay. This type of uh, means influence our publishing decision. So kind of international journals are more desirable yeah. for you? Yeah, more desirable. Um, and Julio? I just published on international journals so far. Yeah, okay. Um, and then kind of uh, our last theme of discussion. Um, so from anyone listening, if there's any other questions, please type them in the chat box now. Um, so you all researcher users, that's how we kind of reached out to you, but what channels in general do you use to stay up to date with research? Um, Julio? Well, usually I rely a lot of the app on Twitter where we kind of have a discussion in our team. We share interesting papers with each other if possible. We have these sort of groups inside our university where we discuss paper almost weekly. And sometimes we use some suggestions based on Mendeley by Severe or by Nature Publishing Group. So they have like this mailing list or these newsletters where they suggest papers related to what you read or to what you have been reading in the past. Great. Um, Rishi, uh, what, do you, uh, what channels do you use? Uh, for my case, I use uh, Science Direct, which is uh, means our institute has some agreement with Science Direct, and on that, we search our topics and all relevant means up to the mark research and everything comes based on the years and the newest one gives us the idea to up to which level the research has gone and we find the research gaps based on that thing. Um, and Faye? Yes, I use a Twitter, ResearchGate, Stoke, and I, subscri I subscribe to some uh, mail list to stay up to date with the research. And sometimes I went to library to read a hard copy, but it's not very updated. Yeah. Um, we have a few questions coming in from um, attendees of the webinar. So Irene Rodriguez from BMJ is asking, um, with regards to deciding where to publish, um, Julio mentioned that uh, the group does some research and provides a list to, of journals to the API. Um, how do you go about researching and finding out about journals? Um, what tools do you use? Um, do you use any tools? What channels do you go for? Okay, so usually the first step is to check which journals are we citing. So if you're writing the manuscript, we check from which yeah. journals mostly our references are taken from mm -hmm. and lately we try to use I guess it's Simago and mm -hmm. it ranks journals according to the topic and the area so we're trying to stick to first we try to the higher tire of the area and then if needed we shift down and we move to the bottom of the line sometimes also the reviewers suggested us to move to a different journal and mm -hmm. this is very helpful I guess yeah um, Rishi, how do you go, Yours, you, all of you mentioned that the PI has a final say, but how do you go about recommending journals to them? Mm, yeah, I means what Julio said, I uh, totally agree with him that we go through the references which from which we have taken, uh, means uh, from which our research work is resembling somewhat, and then we try for that publications. <laughs> Great. Um, and Faye? Yeah, we will compare our articles with the scope so that our target mm -hmm. journal and screen the journals and have a final list to hand the list to the PI to decide. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so I'll go through some of the other questions and then I'll continue. Uh, we have a question from David Evans. Um, so it's specific to Rishi um, as he's based in India, but um, in interviews with other Indian authors, um, they have found 
hesitation over open access because of the perception that you pay um, the APC fee to publish. Um, and there's some kind of perception that um, the journal has low quality. Yes. Do you think, have you seen that? Is that kind of an isolated example or have you seen it yourself? Um, is there such perception? Yeah, there, there are lots of perceptions. I Means quality is a big issue. I Means we are always afraid of the quality, what quality would be there. Yeah. But do you think that you having to pay a fee to publish open access means that the journal has a lower quality? Yeah, that that perception also has us. And yeah, that is also a big challenge. So kind of you, you see yourself. Um, and also there is lack of awareness among all the researchers. They just want to means publish in any I means any journals. They don't think of the qualities so much. Yes, but we are afraid to publish in means not non-reputed journals. Yeah, um, so kind of wary of quality. But at the same time, you said that you kind of publish in open access as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, then, um, other than open access, all of you mentioned open access and reputation um, as kind of key factors. What what else would motivate you to uh, publish to a journal that you previously published with? Um, so, or publishing a journal from the same publisher. What other factors kind of influence you apart from reputation and open access, Julio? Uh, also the quality of the review because sometimes the quality of the reviewers or, or the comments they made is not probably really satisfactory for us yeah. so usually if you publish with a journal or with a publisher and we notice that the reviewers are now more engaging in the review and they are providing some useful comments they're more motivated to republish toward the same journal and i guess it's also a matter of exposure if we notice that our paper has a lot of views and yeah somehow it gains exposure it motivates us to republished over the same publisher. Great. Um, Rishi, uh, what are the factors yeah. influence you? Factors means what uh, Gulio said that means this uh, reviewer means reviewer's reputation also matters. So who yeah. is reviewing and what are the comments? Much, yeah. And Faye? Yes, I agree with them. And I think for some errors of views, the specific journal is limited so there will not be some hesitation to decide which journal. Yeah um, and what draws your attention on social media and different apps um, in terms of kind of the content you said you uh, you mentioned that you use Twitter Julio um, yeah. what kind of attracts your attention um, is it videos is it pictures is it interviews blog posts what kind of content Grabs you. Usually, mostly pictures and videos instead of yeah. interviews. I guess they are most effective. They draw your attention immediately. Probably pictures are the best one because in Twitter, you usually just scroll the app and you just don't focus too much on the content sometimes. I mean, videos, if probably the first image is engaging, you just click and play the video. Otherwise, you just skip it. Yeah. I'm not sure about interviews, but for blog posts, there are some good bloggers that actually describe different papers and this somehow works if they link the paper and they give a good review of it or if they describe that the paper is good and reliable. So, yeah. Um, what about the others, Rishi? Um, what kind of attracts your attention, not only on Twitter, but other tools that you're using um, when you are um, researching? Uh, means uh, this uh, uh, video, video, video is very much effective, very mm -hmm. much effective tool, and also interview. I means interview is very good tool to means find our questions and their answers. In this interview method, interview format, it helps and, a lot. And Faye, um, if when you're doing kind of research and using different tools, what kind of formats? What kind of content would, have your attention? Yeah, I would be glad to see some graphs, some statistics um, yeah. from about the, our field, about the different researchers. And sometimes there were some interactive surveys, and that would be fun to 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 do with. 
Um, okay, thank you. And um, I assume you often also receive emails um, from journals with kind of papers. Um, how, do you prefer to receive one article or selection of articles? Do you prefer kind of a digest format where you see top articles in your field? Um, and how frequent, frequently would you like to see these emails? Do you find them helpful at all, Giulio? Definitely, I prefer a selection of articles over a single article. About the frequency, I won't be able to say something. I mean, usually you receive those emails or daily or weekly, but I guess it's sometimes you want to receive it daily. Sometimes you just don't read it, even if it's daily and you're interested in the email, you just throw it in the bin because you have other things to do or urgent matter. Yeah. I guess weekly is a good compromise, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Do you find these emails helpful? Um, Rishi, what about you? Um, do you prefer one yeah. article or multiple and how, how often and do you find them helpful? Yeah, for me, frankly speaking, I mean, I like, I mean, if some information about research is, I mean, research paper is coming on email, but the frequency matters because if you, if it comes daily, then we are very much less interested to see because of our timings and everything. And if it is weekly, as Julio said, I will prefer to see what are the contents in everything. Yes. yes. And Faye, do you receive such yes. emails and do you find them useful? Yes, I prefer a set of articles and for the frequency, I think that for personal speaking, I like it twice a week. Twice a week, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so a question to everyone. Um, are you, well, uh, you said that there's a few different factors and the quality of review is one of them, but also kind of speed of publication, that kind of stuff. Are you loyal to a specific publisher or journal? Um, or is it just based on the research paper that you're publishing at the time um, and what's more relevant? Um, and if you're loyal, what makes you loyal to that publisher or journal? Julio? I don't think I'm really loyal to a specific <laughs> publisher, to be honest. It usually goes up to what we're publishing and what we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, and then um, Rishi? Yeah, I'm also not uh, loyal to any uh, public publishers. And it depends only our research and our I mean, supervisor's suggestions, which to publish, which to choose. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and Faye? Yes, I'm not a loyal person, <laughs> not <Yeah>. mean publication. <laughs> <either>. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, you mentioned that kind of pictures and graphs attract your attention. Um, Faye, what kind of, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you mentioned that graphs and stats figures mm -hmm. kind of attract your attention. Mm -hmm. um, what about you, Julio? Just any picture, any kind of visual format or something more specific? I guess any kind. I mean, sometimes you look for generic pictures. Sometimes you're just interested in the plots or the graph that you see and you just want to read more about it. I yeah. guess it's very specific to the content and to the moment. Yeah. Um, and then a uh, relevant re related question. Um, you mentioned, Julio, that you um, the, you use Twitter a lot. Um, how active are you? Do you just use it for browsing or do you uh, frequently share share articles with um, with your followers or um, how active are you on so social media in general? I'm not that active in posting. I'm quite active in browsing and commenting. In posting usually it's just all very, very interesting articles or something that we did and our supervisor asked us to share, I guess. Um, if we share other people's article, usually it's just because it draws our attention very much or that because we want to get in touch and get more comments on that. Yeah. Um, Rishi, how active are you? Yeah, I'm not uh, so much active on Twitter, but on Facebook I'm much active. Yeah. Because in India we use Facebook much as compared to Twitter and other social platforms. And WhatsApp, yeah, we feel <laughs> WhatsApp also we are so much active. And um, Faye, how active are you on social media? 
Um, mostly I use the Twitter after launch and uh, yeah. I still don't share stuff with others. I just uh, looking yeah. around what's new the update of the field. Okay, um, let's um, finish with some of the questions from the previous team. Um, do you face any challenges relating to accessing research papers? Um, whether it's papers that your institution subscribe to or um, lack of subscription, any kind of challenges, Julio? Usually we get access to most of the papers we need. If we don't, the library is quite helpful in the sense that we ask them for a specific paper and they try to get us a copy from partners institution or they just pull the single article sometimes. Yeah. It's not really a challenge, but it's time consuming if we don't have access to the data or to the article, to a specific article, because it may take weeks before getting a copy. So yeah. usually you just avoid that one and you look for something similar. Are there any challenges with accessing papers um, at home, let's say, outside of the university or on mobile or um, different formats? Do you usually do that? Do you find it difficult to access full text? Um, Julio? Not on mobile. I mean, I don't usually read papers on mobile. If I'm home, I'm still connected to the network of the university with a VPN. Yeah. So it's not that complicated. I guess without the VPN, there's still a way, but it can be more consuming because you need to log in for each paper you don't know that. Yeah. Um, Rishi, um, do you have any issues around uh, um, accessing research papers? Yes, ma'am. A lot of uh, challenges because most of means most of uh, means uh, research paper we get access, but some means I will say 20% we can't get access to our institute login also, and it becomes a big challenge for us to find all the data and everything. And yeah. at home, it is completely means impossible to get means only in if I open Science Direct and then only one to two research papers of that field is an open access, and most of them are you have to. Means, uh, subscribe and then you have to you have access. That's yeah. a big challenge. And Faye, do you come across any challenges? Yes, I think one challenge is about the dissertations. I mm -hmm. cannot always have access to. That's a issue. Dissertations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, do you, Faye? Do you read journals in um, Chinese language or in English or both? Both. Yeah. Any of the others? Um, Julio, Rishi, do you mostly, you mostly English. I mean, it happened to read a few journals in different languages, Italian, German, or Japanese, but mostly I try to stick with English. Yeah, for me. Yeah. Yeah, Rishi. For me, it means uh, I prefer to read in English only because uh, in Hindi, I mean, in our uh, national language, Hindi. We don't have any journals. I have not, not seen any journals in Hindi. But as my research is Indo-German, so many times I face also German uh, translations, German uh, journals, and then translation is a big problem in that. Yeah. Um, and you, you all kind of um, mentioned that you publish in international journals and in English. Um, can you, are there, is there anything else that um, either the publishers can do, um, such as kind of all your institutions that can help more people publish in English journals? Do you, do you see that beneficial, such as, for example, academic writing training or um, something that can benefit you, Faye? Yes. Uh... We have academic writing training and also in the initial stage of writing, I would pay my friend to, to, to do the proofreading for me. Yeah. Um, Julio? We um, have the same kind of training even yeah. here. Yeah. So we usually have some kind of training on how to publish and how to write. And also being an international team, we have people from different countries trying to review the language and trying to make it consistent with just a variant of English. Yeah. And Rich, do you have similar training at your institution? Uh, I will say no, <laughs> means yeah. we don't have such type of trainings. 
Yeah, and we search on Google's how to publish, how to do this, do this, mm -hmm. and gain knowledge from that platform only. Yeah. Um, related to that, are there any? Is there need for more tools that would help kind of science communication? Um, Julio, can you think of any that's missing? I'm not really sure. To be honest, I mean, we rely a lot on tools like Grammarly to double check the grammar. We have a tool called, called Writeful that allows us to check for synonyms and this kind of other way we can write down something. If it's effective to science, I'm not really sure because it's mostly something made to general public. So probably have some specific tools for scientific communication may help. Mm -hmm. But even though I'm not really sure if it's worth creating a tool like this, I mean, if it can be released for a good price or if it's worth like and adopted by different universities around the world. What about um, tools like aggregators? Um, so similar to research where you have multiple journals in one place. Um, do you see the need of that in general and um, what's missing in that field? Um, Rishi? Means uh, in my view, if uh, means we have research papers written in means what you say in uh, written form, and if we have some video format of the research, means if some video presentations are there, means about the techniques and every methodology that is still missing a lot. Because for methodology part, we have to gather a lot of information from here and there. If the author of that article, if he uh, means give some uh, video demonstration, then it will be uh, quite useful for our research. Um, Faye, do you see a gap for any um, science communication tools or anything that would help help it be more efficient? Mm, I also use a Grammarly as a Gilio and I look forward to learning new technologies in this process. I'm still learning. Yeah. Um, we have a couple of more questions from the attendees. If there's any anything else, just please post them on the chat box. So I'm just going to ask the last two questions for now. Um, you mentioned that, um, I think Julia mentioned that the impact of your paper is kind of a factor that would help you um, decide to publish in the same journal. For example, if your paper has, been, has got, gained more visibility, how do mm -hmm. you determine how much impact your paper um, has had? How do you gather information about that? Okay, so usually most of the journals provide us with statistics about the views of the paper. Also, majority mm -hmm. of our papers are linked to the data repository of the Nanyang Technological University. And from there, we can monitor the access and downloads of our data. And there, are, there is an index, which should be the Plum X index, I guess. I don't remember correct, perfectly, but it monitors how many times an article has been shared on social media. And this is something we are considering a lot lately, especially on Reddit, Twitter, and Facebook, to see if someone is actually sharing the data or discussing about the paper. Yeah, Rishi, how do you assess the impact of your research paper? I mean, if it has been referenced, uh, my research paper has been referenced to uh, as many, I uh, mean, different, different uh, means research papers, then we think that means our it is having a very good impact factor by the differences. Yeah. It has been different. And Faye? Yeah, and obviously the citations and the download numbers and sometimes uh, the emails you received from the audience or your peers. Yeah, thank you. Um, is it, um, so a question, to everyone, well, I guess mainly um, fake is um, you publish in um, different language as well. Is it a positive feature to be able to publish in um, your local language or in, well, is it a positive feature to be able to publish in your own language in an international journal? Uh, in my case, I think yes, because my field is a kind of something we have something to do with language and there are some international journals they accept the both Chinese and the 
English articles, mm -hmm. so I think it's positive. Yeah. Um, so, and then another question related to assessing your impact, uh, the impact of your paper. Um, do you feel that you know how to market your own work um, or is it something that you would like to know more about? Is, is that something that you think your, the publisher can help you with, Julio? It definitely can. I mean, if the publisher is able to help us, it's definitely helpful. Yeah. I guess yeah. they have more experience in doing that than us. We are just new to the field, probably. I mean, we were not used to share data and we were not used to share our articles. We are just trying to do this as a lab in the latest few months. So yeah. many tips or suggestion is welcome. Um, yeah. yeah, Rishi, do you, do you feel that you know how to promote your own work? Um, and do you feel like you need some further help with, uh, with that from the publisher? Uh, I don't know yet how to, yeah. And if help is provided, then it will be very much beneficial. Yeah. Help a lot. Um, Faye, what about you? Mm, to me, it would be the directed the communication. But I think uh, to maybe like a research gate, you can just uh, uh, get in touch with the researcher. And maybe this can also be realized from the publisher. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned that um Rishi and Julie, you mentioned that help from the publisher would be good what kind of what type of marketing would you like to see of your paper from the publisher perspective so what would you like them to do Julio I guess if they have a social media account of the publisher of Auto Journal this would be very helpful because it helps you get in touch with different people yeah. and even if they use some specific words to publish, to, to advertise something, I guess it's something we need more experience in doing. So we just stick to some basic, hey, our latest article is out, but maybe they have some better way to do it. And hints that they can give us to publish our article on our own social media, not just on their social media. Um, Rishi, you agree to that? What kind of help? Um, I mean, so Julio, uh, he has a very nice sentence in that if uh, it has been assessed with social media platforms then it is more I mean, it is more helpful in that case yeah um a question to faye um you mentioned that you use twitter do you use wechat to stay up to date with research <laughs> yes yeah, sure i use both wechat and twitter well wechat uh, this, uh, i had a networking with some chinese researchers so twitter for some international researchers yeah um, Julio, do you use WeChat? I use WeChat, but not to stay up to date with research, to be honest. Okay. Um, is Rishi, is WeChat available on, in India? Do you use it? I don't have any idea about it. I don't think <laughs> that it is available in India. Okay. <laughs> no idea. Fair enough. Um, I don't think there are any more questions. Um, so I'm just going to... And the webinar here, thank you very much for, um, for um, participating. I'll be sending out the recording um, so you can forward to um, your colleagues. Um, the, there's my email on the, on the screen. So if you have any further questions to me or to the speakers, please get in touch. Um, thanks to our uh, panelists, they were great. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you, you to all. Good day.